magnet hung in a hardware shop And all around was a loving crop Of scissors and needles, nails and knives Offering love for all their lives But for iron the magnet felt no whim Though it charmed iron, it charmed not him From needles and nails and knives he turned For he set his love on a silver chair a little Gilbert and Sullivan, eh? A silver churn. A silver churn. Just exactly. Let me how good your memory is. Very magnetic. Fancy took this turn. If I can wheedle a knife or needle, why not a silver churn? Surprise, the needles open their well drilled eyes. The pen knife felt shut up, no doubt. The scissors declared themselves. Shut I remember up. these people when they were big Broadway stars. The All there has been. New York's full of them. That's the trouble with these old hams. They never know when they're washed up. Till a hammer came up and drove them home. Jimmy, I'm so hungry I could eat a bad boon. Better keep away from him, Pick. Well, wise guys, you lose. Take a look at the fifth at Belmont. You mean Whisperum didn't win? Whisperum was so far behind, she didn't even have to brush herself off. If you hadn't bet on that nag, we'd have been ten bucks ahead. It's my fault for letting you handle the dough. From now on, it stays with the treasure. Money, money, money. Don't you boys ever talk about anything else? No. Does anyone? Sure. The Hathaways. Ask them for ham and eggs and they give you Pirates of Patience. Pirates of Penzance. Oh, a new mob, huh? <laughs> no, stupid. Years ago, the Hathaways were... Were the, the sensation of Broadway. And you was the prima donna. Subret. All right, Kitty, we've heard it all before. We'll settle for coffee and cakes. My fault for expecting bookies to appreciate the theater. Hey, listen. I got more producers for clients than you ever heard of. And that ain't the half of it. He even sells them a horse sometimes. Hey! Maybe he could sell you. What? Well, I, I, I mean as, uh, as an actress. Sure. Kitty, do you hoof? I do not. Too bad. That's what the public wants today. Half jazz, hot stuff. Uh, pick a winning horse. You got to figure the field it's running against. Now, Tech, help yourself in the seventh. You take it. Chuck's got his. Yeah, the one on the right. Uh, what's the matter with your gut? Oh, I see dames again, huh? Hey, what beautiful eyes. Have they got eyes? They kind of fake to your bankroll. Would I like to get an arm load of that one? That's that with a grim chuck. What's the this matter? This ticket saves you two bits at the box office, mister. A gob of gorgeous co-ed and chorus girls. <laughs> and 75 beautiful hostesses. <laughs> Just a moment there, mister. Hey, right, come on, let's get a look at this. Not me, them dames will take your right teeth. And hock the fillings. Yeah? Well, I'd take a chance on that, baby. Not with our dope. What do you mean? No dame ever made a sucker of me. Well, we ain't taking no chances. I'll bet you ten to one I don't spend over ten bucks. We'll, we'll take, take it. Oh, my pals. Why don't you wish me good luck? Good, good luck. luck. Are you not too mad to dance with me? Sugar Plum Bowl, three dollars worth of tickets, didn't it? <laughs> Give me a man of 
40. They understand a girl. Mm, for three nights, you all kept Sugar Plum waiting on the corner till daybreak. think I'd keep the southern gentleman waiting on purpose, do you? Mm, you kept me buying tickets to the close. 2.30 a.m. <laughs> Where I come from, a promise is a promise. Oh, look. What? My bracelet's gone. What? Last night, my ring was stolen. The police wanted to know the name of my last partner. You didn't tell him it was Sugar Plum, did you? Oh, no. Look, there he is. Who? The detective on the case. Oh, maybe, maybe I'd better see you later. Yeah, on the same corner. Uh, what are you taking them for? To remind me of our date. <laughs> I saw your picture downstairs. I said that's worth five bucks to get acquainted with. Only five? Well, maybe ten, but that's all. Honey, your future's in my arms. Well, that was the last mile. Come on. Oh, and I was just going to tell you about my past. How long is it? About 50 tickets. Hey, listen, those bum gags burn me up. All right, honey, how about a little drink to lower the temperature? Come on, sit down. You sit down, I can't. The girls have to stand out here. That's silly. Why? So you men can't drag us down to your level. What's it gonna be? Lemonade with cherry. Beer. Only soft drinks, big boy. Make up your mind. You heard me. Beer. Root beer. Cigarettes, cigars, souvenirs? No. I don't like your brand. How much? Fifty cents. Oh, it's a cute. And two dollars for the dog. Take your dogs for a walk, here. This isn't a dance hall, it's a pirate's den. Would you excuse me a minute? I'll be right back. I think I better wait under the table, it'll be cheaper. <laughs> oh, sorry, kid, I broke the class. Oh, that's all right. Bye, mother doesn't. Well, I thought I'd be getting back to my iron worker. Is he tough? Tough. He thinks he's still on the job. Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents for what? Root beer, thirty, lemonade, thirty-five, and cherries a dime extra. Whew. Go. What's the idea of keeping me waiting? I'm making myself over for you. Come on, honey, let's dance. No, I'm out of tickets. Oh, you're not going to let that stop you, are you? Never mind the build-up. We can use it on the floor. It all depends on you, honey. You owe us $3.40, please. Who, me? Yeah. You're sitting out time. What? But, honey, it's the rule. Well, of all the chiseling shakedowns I ever saw, this is the tops. Just for sitting at a table? Well, she wasn't... Do I have to pay for that, too? Give her five, dear. She'll make change in tickets. Wait a minute. Six fifty and three forty is, uh, nine ninety. One, two, three... Fifty. I'll have one ticket. One ticket? But, honey, no one buys... I said ten dollars was my limit. I'm getting one ticket, see? One dance, get it? One dance!
look at that moon. What'll it cost me? Oh, Jimmy, is that nice? It's the rhythm in my heart for you. Gee, what a night for a ride. Bus is still running when you get off? Oh, Jimmy, I was just going to tell you I've got a car. That doesn't surprise me. Now is that night. the moon and you, eh? Okay, come on. Oh, just as soon as we close. Oh, I get it. Am I supposed to stay here and buy tickets till you get off, eh? Oh, well, of course, if you can't afford it. Afford it? Well, I just refuse to be a sap. If I thought you were, I wouldn't have mentioned the ride. Oh, well, forget it, honey. Here's where I get off anyway. Here. No, you keep the ticket and come back sometime. Tell me, do you, uh... Pull this moon stuff on all the fellas? Oh, well, if that's what you think, let's skip it. No, I mean, uh, do you uh, go riding often? Only on nights like this, when there's a gorgeous moon. You know, I know a swell road down by the ocean, where I go speeding along with wind blowing against my face. Sometimes I just stop the car and listen to the breakers. Gee, it's swell. <laughs> you should have been an actress. What time you close? A little after 12. Okay, honey, I'll be waiting. Night, kids. See you tomorrow. Hey, the way you keep waiting till 2 a.m. slays me. Some saleswoman. Strictly business, honey. They're in the market for one thing. I'll tell them something else. You think he was wise to the run around? Who cares? I'll never see him again. Oh, no? We'll give your mascaras a treat. Say, if you insist upon going into the moonlight, will you call Joe for me? I'll call him as soon as I get in the house. Thanks. Well, Jimmy, my amorous one, you're asking for it. Here goes. Do your stuff, co-ed. The chorus will back up the line. Hello. I want you to meet my girlfriend, Mabel. This is Jimmy. Hello. Hello yourself. Come on. Good night, Mabel. Oh, wait a minute. I promised Mabel I'd drive her home. You don't mind, do you? Of course he doesn't. I can see it in his face. So you thought I'd wait on 48th Street and you'd give me the go-by, huh? Oh, I like that. I never stood a guy up in my life. Doggone women. Oh, I forgot. What? I can't get my car to pay the bill. Oh, gosh. And there's only a dime between us. Now, ain't that too bad. And what is this, a sister act? No, I tell you, my car's in the garage, and it'll take $25 to get it out. Yeah, what did you say? <laughs> His ears are muscle-bound. Yeah, so is my pocketbook. If you think I'm going to spend my hard-earned cash to get your chariot out of hock, you're crazy. Hooray! He's got a corner. Give him a soapbox. All right, Jimmy, if that's the way you feel about it, let's call it a day. Oh, so that's it, huh? You're gonna walk out on me. Well, listen, a million other guys would bow out at this point, but not me. The bill is still $25. So you think I'm cheap? Don't contradict him, Mabel. Customer's always right. Yeah? Well, get this. I've gone this far, and I'll go a little farther. You sold me a ride in the moonlight, baby, and you're going through with it. Wait a minute, I didn't make you no promises. You would pick a street to repair it. How's the rear seat? I think it's black and blue. When are we going to get rid of this excess baggage? Oh, it isn't far now. Maybe you live in the next block, don't you? I did. What do you mean, you did? I mean, we moved yesterday to the other side of town. What? I didn't know she'd moved, Jimmy. Why don't you let me drive all this distance for without telling me? You didn't ask me, so I came along for the ride. Well, they can ride back on a streetcar. 
There's no street cars at this hour of the night. Well, then let her take a taxi. But, but there's, there's only, only a dime, dime between us. us. It's worth a couple of bucks to get rid of her. Ten. Ten, huh? Just for that, you can walk back. No ten, no move. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. Jimmy, if you touch me, I'll scream. Now, go ahead and scream. <laughs> Who's Joe? Oh, only my hairdresser. Ninety-nine. Good night. Good night. You know, Matilde, that's the fourth time that's happened to her this week. Any other day and pull half the stuff I let you get away with tonight, I'd have walked out on her. But here I am, still trying to figure out what makes you tick. Thanks. Do you hand out compliments often? No. I'm no kidding, you got some. First, I just wanted to know you. Then I want to know you a little better. And now I want to... Uh, I had a hold of the guy that invented horns. Just when I was getting somewhere, too. Getting somewhere? This buggy cramps my style. I'm gonna find a parking place. How about that street up there? Oh, no, don't take that road. Why not? You can't stop on a main highway. Uh, yes, but I know a swell spot just around the next turn. Okay, but if you're stalling, we're coming back. Now, what's the matter? I haven't the slightest idea. In trouble? No, we're just out here for a bicycle ride. Now, don't be fresh. Maybe you can help. Are you a mechanic? Some people think so. Great night to go riding, ain't it? What's the matter? Would you mind telling us? No. That's my racket. Now, I hate that just too bad. Yes, sir. That's bad. Very bad. Well, it can't be much. We what? Well, Why, you couldn't... That thing. Say, do you know anything about motors? No. That's good. Now, of course, now, I ain't looked very close yet, but a quick glance tells me that the ignition system's all shot, the points is all burned out, it needs all new plugs, new wires, and the shaft is probably snapped. Wait a minute. How many different parts to a car? I'll have to look that up. But I think there's about 19,000, counting bolts and nuts. No, you said something, mister. Tow her in. see there's no lack of vitamin B around here today. My two collaborators in the uplifting occupation of bookmaking. To chuck, to pick. Come, Kitty, my little nightingale, the usual breakfast for the buttercup star border. By the way, Jimmy, the last time you took cigars, you forgot to pay. Suppose we settle those little items as we go along. Oh, yes, by all means. I, uh... Seems to be a little short of change this morning. Oh, Chuck, will you give Kitty a dollar? Sure. Thank you. A 
dollar. Where's all the dough you had? Say, how much did that dame take you for? Now, listen, I can explain. Well, you better talk fast. And funny, because we don't laugh easy. Explain. Go ahead. All right, all right. You... I'm broke. What? Now, just a second, just a second. Remember the big shot? No dame ever made a sucker out of me. Sure. I'll take a chance on that baby. Yeah, man. I'll bet 10 to 1 I don't spend over 10. And don't forget you're gonna pay that bet. It's gonna cost you over a grand. Where are you gonna get a thousand bucks? Now, listen, you guys. I've been running around with you for a long while. You never knew me to watch on a bet yet, did you? You'll get your money, every cent of it. Only I ain't gonna pay it. She is. The dame? Ha, <laughs> ha. Now I tell one. All right, all right, but I'm not through with that little bandit. She gave me a run around by leading me on with promises. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to her. Every crook is a chump for his own medicine. Yeah, well, if you think you can outsmart one of those streamlined gold diggers, you're screwy. Not me, pal. I got it all figured out. Listen, I'm going to see her tonight and give her a line that'll make an angel leave heaven. And you're not too mad to dance with me? Forget it, baby. I had a good reason for coming back here. Well, ambitious, let's have it. Well, in the first place, I want you to understand that the money I spent last night means nothing. Huh? I thought you'd bust a blood vessel at Joe's garage. Yeah? And don't you know why I acted that way? Listen, I make up the riddles, not the answers. All right, gorgeous, I'll let you in on the lowdown. I'm a scout. A boy scout? Yeah, no, a talent scout. And I came up here last night looking for material. Well, how do you want it, by the yard or by the piece? Picture attracted me, so I came up to see if you had any talent. So you took me into the moonlight to watch my performance. Yeah, and you were swell. What an actress. You got looks, personality, and what's more, brains. I, with a little training, you'll be a big hit on the stage. You're gonna make a star out of me, huh? Don't dish out promises, Toots. That's my racket. Listen, screwball, I'm an agent. This is strictly business. I guarantee to get you a job, and you pay me 10% of what you earn. That's fair, isn't it? Perfect, if I believed you. All right, I'll prove it to you. The first thing I'm going to do is take you to the biggest theatrical producer in New York, Charles Dillon. Charles Dillon? <laughs> you couldn't even get in his office. Listen, I came here to make a deal with you. Now you can take it or leave it. But if you're smart, you'll bring a picture of yourself and meet me in front of the mutual building tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Don't make me laugh. I'm not even awake at that hour. Well? It's your future. I'll be waiting. You have a long wait. Well, at least the elevator's on the up and up. That ain't all, baby face. Take a look at that sign. Oh, very pretty. Where'd you get the paint? Hey, don't you believe anything? Yeah, my name's Pearl Proctor. Oh, that reminds me. Your name's terrible, so I've changed it to Virginia Lee. Hey, but I don't like that name. Quiet. If I'm going to make a star out of you, i got to do all the talking. But, Jimmy... Silence. I told Mr. Dillon all about Virginia Lee, and from now on, you're it. Well, hello, Jimmy. Hi, Angel. Mr. Dillon in? Not yet. Did you have an appointment? Yes, I called him at his house this morning. Then he'll be here. He wouldn't keep you waiting. You want to go into the office? Oh, thanks. I'll wait out here. Sit down, flower of the south. No, thanks. Uh, I can reach the exit quicker standing up. Still unconvinced, huh? You're a tough audience. I haven't seen Dylan yet. You might be his bootleg. Ah, good morning, Mr. Dylan. Hello, Jimmy. Right on time. Why not? I got a fine for you. Good. Cutting off it. Good morning, Miss Pringle. Good morning, Mr. Dylan. Oh, I wanted to discuss the details of that Virginia Lee proposition. She sounds good to me. She's terrific. Well, you do know how to pick them. Oh, look. Here's a picture. Oh. My word, she is a beauty. I thought you'd like her. Why, she's magnificent. What line. What grace. What poise. She's headline material, all right. Well, if she can perform as well as she looks, she's worth an investment.
Stay, dearie. The ladies' lounge is down the hall. She looks like an A1 horse to me. How much do they want for her? Make it cash and I can get her for 10000 I'd like to own the animal, all right, but I'm producing the new Gretchen Holman show and I, I hesitate tying up that much cash right now. Come in. Ah, oh, Gretchen, we were just talking about you. Thanks. I didn't think you took your mind off horses long enough to discuss me. Frankly, you were both part of the conversation. Oh, this is Jimmy Allen. Jimmy has sold me practically all the racehorses I own. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is Mr. Charles Dillon, the theatrical producer's office. Sure, and we have letterheads to prove it. Mm. And that man that went in there with Jimmy was Mr. Dillon? In the flesh. Why? Don't ask me. I'm stuck for the answer myself. I got a hunch. You and Miss Holman are going into partnerships on a new play. Why not a racehorse? What's this? Virginia Lee, a three-year-old. And I'll bet you if she runs in the derby, she'll romp home with the bacon. She's a great buyer, 10,000, Gretchen. Oh, get thee behind me, Satan. You know my weakness. Mr. Allen, leave the picture here. I'll think it over. I'd like to tell you some more about her. Could I see you again? Oh, I wish you would. Well, looks like Lady <laughs> Luck is smiling on me. I'll keep in touch with you. Goodbye. So long, Jimmy. Say, Jimmy. Are you handing out any tips today? Uh, the, the, uh, t tips? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, pardon me, yes. <laughs> Buy yourself a cigar. Well, kid, it's in the bag. I'll have your name in lights in 60 days. Did anybody ever drop you when you were a baby? Listen, Tomato. You won't be the first day my groom for stardom on Broadway, but it takes dough and lots of it. I knew there was a catch in it. What's the matter? I took you to see Dylan, didn't I? Yeah, but I didn't meet him. Sure you didn't, because I changed my mind. He was such a pushover for the picture, I thought I'd keep you in the background until you learn how to dance, sing, and act. That means lessons and lots of them. And who's going to pay for them? Baby, you could get money out of the man and the moon. Supposing I could get the money. How do you work your racket? It's no racket. You sign a contract, just like all the other stars I've made. Would you mind naming one star you've made? Uh, huh? But, uh, sure. Uh, huh? Uh, well, uh, Gretchen Holman. <laughs> You're having pipe dreams. Why don't you lay off the stuff? Oh, you think I'm a liar? The world's biggest. That settles it. I waste my time proving to you I'm on the level and still your wisecrack. The deal's off. Never was on. I'll admit you put on a pretty good show with Dylan, but this Gretchen Holman stuff is too much. Oh, yeah? Uh, excuse me. Take me to the Ritz, please. Oh, Miss Holman. Uh, the reason I waited, it's less than 60 days till the Derby, and Virginia Lee is a bargain at that price, so we'll have to act quickly. I'd like to talk to you about it, Miss Allen, but I have a luncheon date. Well, I'm going to the Ritz myself, supposing I ride along and we discuss the details on the way. That's an idea. Hop in. Just a minute. So long, Toots. I'll call you tonight. contract until you prove to me you can deliver. Well, I've handled some stubborn dames in my life, but you're the limit. Here I'm offering you the world on a silver platter. Yeah, but so far the platter looks greasy and the world might land in my lap. Well, what are you talking about? Listen, didn't you sit here in the office and hear Dylan rave about your picture? You saw how close I am to Gretchen Holman. And now here we are, 10 o'clock at night, in the biggest Broadway producer's office talking business. Why do you think if I wasn't on the up and up, Dylan would give me the assistance of his general manager, one of the shrewdest showmen in the world, by the critics call Mr. Fairfax a genius. And not only that, with great difficulty and persuasion, I managed to secure the services of Mr. Dylan's personal attorney, one of the greatest legal lights in his profession. <coughs> but do you think this office is open to the public? That any two-bit agent can run in here and do business? You better make up your mind, baby, and make it up fast. I can't keep these learned gentlemen waiting here all night. Well... No. All right, here's the 
is my proposition. I agree to study with all the teachers you select, provided the total cost does not exceed $500. But until I'm on the stage in a play with my name in light, I flatly refuse to pay you the extra $500 you demand for handling me. Then the deal is cold. Too bad. But that's that. Well, good night, gentlemen. I'll be at Swingland. Come up and swing me sometime. Just a minute, Twinkle Toes. All right, you win. But only because I know you're going to turn out to be a great investment. Our attorney will have the new contracts tomorrow. <coughs> well, now that we're agreed, uh, I'd better get on with my work. You know, I have to earn the money. Haven't you forgotten something? I don't think so. The uh, $100 retainer for the lawyer? <laughs> You'll have to remind me. When it comes to handing out money, I'm terribly absent-minded. Don't worry. I remember everything. Jimmy, I... I guess I had you all wrong. Well, you got a hundred, partner, by the sweat of your brow. But before she kicks in that last 500, you'll have to sharpen your chisel. Don't worry, she'll pay the full amount. This is only the beginning. Now, boys, please go. If anyone finds out I'll let you use this office, I'll lose my job. Right, Fanny. I'll be up in the morning with a hot tip on the first race. Oh, in the meantime, I'll take the $10 you promised me for the night. Oh, yes. Fanny, I'll never forget you. I can't figure how we're going to get that dame into a show. We'll worry about that when we get to it. In the meantime, here's 90 bucks on account. Divide, slick fingers. Okay, okay. First thing we gotta find is some teachers that'll kick back at least 50%. More easy. Flexibility, my dear. Chin up. Head back. Charles. Pause. Savoir faire. Now. So nice to see you, Miss X. You look elegant. Elegant? My dear, that's plebeian. Gauche. A better word would be splendid. Oh. Okay, Toots, I'll get it. Miss Lee, please. I mean, Lady Sylvia. Once again. One, two, three, turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My time's up anyway. How much do I owe you? Ten dollars, please. All right, Theodore, kick in with our cut. Money, money. Hmm. I wish the world could do without money. Here's another payment on account, fellas. How's the dame doing? Okay, I guess. But figuring out how to get her on a stage is driving me screwy. Well, you better think fast. The 60 days is up next week. Why don't you try and be cheerful for a change? What's the matter? Did you read? Well, there's a light in the basement. Yeah? Then we'll get in. The idea of closing so early? We always do on rehearsal nights. Rehearsal? Yes, we go over our songs with some of the members of the company. Just in case. In case you play a benefit or something? Ouch! That's my foot! Uh, we're going to do the patter song from Radigora. Have you ever heard it? No, but we'd like to. Come on, fellas. Hello there. Hello, boy. Hi. Hello. I have to play the accompaniment. Pardon me. I got it. Got what? The show, the actors, everything. Are you nuts? My eyes are fully open to my dreadful situation. I should go at once to Roderick and make him an oration. I should tell him I've recovered my forgotten moral senses and I don't get up and sleep any for any consequences. I do not wish to perish by the sword or by the dagger, but a martyr may indulge in a little pardonable swagger, and a word or two of compliment for vanity would flutter. But I've got to die tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter, 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 matter. So it really doesn't matter, 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 matter. So it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter, 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 mat
If I were not a little mad and generally silly, I should give you my advice upon the subject really nearly. I should show you in a moment how to grapple with the question, and you'd really be astonished at the force of my suggestion. On the subject, I shall write you a most valuable letter, full of excellent suggestions, and I feel a little better. But at present, I'm afraid I am as mad as any hatter, so I'll keep them to myself, for my opinion doesn't matter. Her 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 opinion doesn't matter. Matter, 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 If I had been so lucky as to have a steady brother who would talk to me as we are talking now to one another, who would give me good advice when he discovered I was earning, which just the very day for which you knew I am for my existence would have made a rather interesting idol. I might have lived and died a very decent in the middle. This particularly rapid, unintelligible pattern is in general. Oh, it doesn't matter. If it is, 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 it doesn't matter. This particularly rapid, unintelligible pattern is in general. You can sing Listen. faster than I can play. <laughs> All I gotta do is put Pearl on Broadway for one night, right? Right. It's a brainstorm. It's terrible. What about a Broadway theater? I'll get that too. We're holding two hundred dollars worth of rubber checks that Dick Barnes give us for lost bets, ain't we? Yeah, that's right. He can square the debt by lending us the region theater. He's only the manager. He don't own the joint. Yeah, but the guy that does is away on a long vacation. It's a perfect setup. Sounds dizzy to me. How do you know Hathaway can dig up enough actors? We'll find out. Well, <laughs> nice to have an audience again. Mr. Hathaway, if my plans are successful, you'll have the biggest audience you've had in years. What do you mean? I mean, you won't have to do your stuff in the cellar. You'll be on the stage. Jimmy, it can't be true. Go on, man, go on. One moment. I wouldn't joke about such things, young man. I'm not joking, Mr. Hathaway. Listen, I know a stage-struck dame named Virginia Lee. She's got a lot of dough and some talent. She's studied with the best of teachers. Now, if you can furnish a complete show, I'll get the theater and promote the dame to back the whole proposition. Why, that's wonderful. We've got everything. When do we start? Could you rehearse and open in a week? Absolutely. All I have to do is notify the cast. Great. Now, there's only one more thing. You'll have to give Miss Lee a small part and put her name up in lights. All that can be arranged. Fine. I'll talk about the details later after I've talked to the day. Come on, fellas. Oh, wait. Wait, she can't meet you here. She wouldn't be impressed. I got it. We'll meet at the Ritz. Could you close early some night? Anytime. Good. I'll pay for the dinner. What's more, I'll tell her you live there. Make whatever arrangements you like. We'll do our part. Hey, this is going to work out swell. I'll see the girl right away. Jimmy. Yeah? You're wonderful. Yeah? <laughs> I'm beginning to think so myself. Oh, oh. isn't this too wonderful? Come on, it's the best news since the army. Hey, what's the idea of telling them the flump had dough? Well, do you monks think they'd have believed my story if they knew she was a ten-cent torso twister? Get wise, get wise. Yeah, what I say to Dame won't go for it. Guess again, Lug. When I get through building up the Hathaway, she'll think they're the biggest stars in the world. That's it. They've just returned from a trip around the globe. Sure, right around the eighth floor. Hello, Howard. What brings you here? Good news. We're going to do the opera again. Hooray! When? Everyone meet tomorrow night in my place. I'll be looking for you. See that you're in good voice. In good voice? Say, listen. The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la, bring promise of merry sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, tra-la, we welcome the hope that we bring, tra-la, of a summer of roses and wine, of a summer of roses and wine. Tra-la-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la, -la -la -la, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra-la-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la, -la 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 -la. Monsieur. Fearing. Are you on this door all evening? Oui, monsieur. Well, I've got a job for you. Ah bien, anything you say, monsieur. I, uh, I'm dining with an elderly couple and a girl. I want you to pay particular attention to the old folks. Oui, monsieur. Sometime during dinner, come over to the table and speak to them as if they were permanent guests of the hotel uh, that had just come back from a long trip in Europe. Oui, monsieur. Uh, what is their name? Mr. and Mrs. Howard Hathaway. Hathaway? Hathaway. I think we have guests for that name. Let me see. They, oui, oui, they are there on suite 503. They reserved a the table for four. They did? Oui, monsieur. Hello, 
Well, Jimmy, you're early. Yeah, say, you both look marvelous. We can return the compliment. Yeah, it ain't bad for a rental, huh? <laughs> well, say, by the way, let me know how much the front sets you back and I'll fix it with you. That won't be necessary. These clothes are our own. No kidding. Say, I understood you took rooms here. That wasn't necessary. The girl would have taken my word for it. That's all right. We're taking care of it. No, but that's expensive. I didn't want you to spend any of your dough. Well, Jimmy, we talked it over. And we don't think it's right to deceive her. Yes, we don't go into that sort of thing. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, it's just that I didn't count on you spending any money. This is my party. Oh, there's another thing I must warn you about. Miss Lee is kind of sensitive about money, so don't discuss business with her. We'll leave it entirely in your hands. Fine. And don't forget, your big Broadway stars. Thanks. My, what a stunning girl. Why, that's her. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Hathaway, this is Miss Virginia Lee. How do you, How do, you do? do? I'm delighted to meet you. Jimmy's told me so much about you. I hope you're not disappointed. Oh, on the contrary. Shall we go in? Yes. Excuse me a minute. Yes, Gee, kids, you look gorgeous. Thank you. And you look uh, splendid. Relax, baby. To me, you're still Pearl. And you're Jimmy. The phony. Let's skip that. Oh, I almost forgot. Don't crack to the Hathaways about their world tour. They don't like to be reminded of it. Really? Why not? Why? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. They, they lost a dog or something somewhere in Europe. I don't know where. Just stay away from the other side. I'll let you do most of the talking. Then everything will be all right. Never take responsibility for cocktails. Make your own selection. Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, a clover club, please. Yes, miss. Cherry, please. The same. Very dry, please. And what will monsieur have? Hmm? Oh, Manhattan. So nice having monsieur and Madame Hathaway with us again. Eh? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> this place is charming. Do you plan to remain here? Yes, we do. Uh, permanently? Surely, unless the opera's a failure. Jimmy tells me you plan to present some uh, Gilbert and Sullivan revivals. Yes, are you familiar with the operettas? Yes, she, she knows them backwards. Then you like our plan for evening. Our stage properties are stored in an old basement, and I have arranged for the company to meet you. Oh, I'd enjoy that. Uh, have you been studying singing long? Has she? Say, she makes some of them canaries at the Metropolitan sound like amateurs. That's fine. We're only rehearsing the Mikado a week, and I'm afraid the leading part would be a little difficult. Mm, it takes years of experience to sing The Moon and I. Oh, she's terrific in anything concerning the moon. Jimmy, your enthusiasm's running away with you. Frankly, I know very little about Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, but you have been studying singing for some time. Well, you see, uh, I've devoted most of my time to dancing. Really? What type of dancing? Why... Uh, we, we've just time for a dance before cocktails. Do <laughs> you mind? No, indeed. Go right ahead. Thank you. on the spot there for a second. Those people have such a wonderful effect on me. I want to tell them everything. Hey, don't ever do that. Why, if they ever thought you'd dance for 10 cents a turn, they'd give us the air. Watch your steps. All right, boss. I'll be careful. 
You know, you've been wonderful so far. You've learned more in 60 days than most girls do in a lifetime. Thanks to you and Lady Sylvia. Let's not dance. It reminds me of Swingler. Look at that sky. Sailing through heaven. Those struggling people below. Hard to believe I was ever one of them. Kind of tough to have to go back to that dance hall tomorrow, huh? I'm not going back. Ever. What? I tried to tell you last night when you came about the show. You didn't give me a chance. I couldn't go back now, Jimmy. Not now. You mean you've given up your job? Yes. But you shouldn't have done that. Jobs are hard to get. <laughs> What's the difference? I'm opening on Broadway, aren't I? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. But, well, supposing you don't make the grade. I've got to. I must. Yes, I know, but... Listen, Jimmy. I'm going on with my studies. Those lessons have done something to me. Made me want to be somebody. Tonight, I'm in a different world. And I want more of it. All of it. She has certainly got you. No, it's you, Jimmy. You said you could make a star of me, like, like you did of Gretchen Holman. Well, I believe you. Why shouldn't I? I don't know. Jimmy, listen to me. I think you're the swellest guy I've ever known. Why do you say that? Why? Well, because one night I played some pretty rotten tricks on you. Most fellows would have hated me for it. They'd have been small and mean and petty about it. Might even have tried to get revenge. But you don't know what the word spite means. You're too big for that sort of thing. Gee. They don't come any better than you, Jimmy. You're just tops with me. I think we better go in. This is John Rogers, our tenor. How do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Jonesy, our stage manager. Mr. Williams, our baritone. How do you do? And this is Adolph, our musical director. <laughs> Look what they've got me to put on. That calls for the Monarchs of the Sea from Pinafore. <laughs> I guess it does. I'll be Cousin Hebe. Good, and you girls can be the sisters and cousins and dogs. <laughs> They're stage props from the gondolier. <laughs> now give three cheers. I'm keeping the way. Hurrah! 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 I am the monarch of the sea. The ruler of the Queen's Navy. Couldn't we go in there and join the others? Great, it's a great, splendid great, idea. Come on. on. And we are his sisters and his fun. sevens and his aunts. And we are his sisters and his aunts and his aunts. And his aunts, and his aunts. When at anchor here I ride, my bosom swells with pride, and I snap my fingers at the foeman's taunt. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. But when the breezes blow, I generally go below and seek the seclusion at the cabin grant. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts.
number? It's the policeman's song from the Pirates of Penzance. <laughs> Capacity for innocent enjoyment. Sent enjoyment is just as great as any honest man. Honest man, our feelings we with difficulty smother. Difficulty smother when constabulary duties to be done. To be done. Oh, take one consideration with another. With another. is not a happy one. Oh, when I've never seen them so happy. I think they're grand. Their hope has given them a new lease on life. Yeah. Enterprising burglars, not a burgling. Not a burgling. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime. Right in crime. He loves to hear the little brook And listen to the merry spirit Hey, 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 why are you going with that stuff? Here, stop. Leave me alone. Get away, please. Now stop hitting me. What's going on here? Please, mister, don't annoy me. I've got work to do. What do you mean work? This stuff belongs to friends of mine. Please, mister, they belong to me. I bought them today, even the toothpicks. They... they sold out? How could I buy them if they didn't sell out? There he is, the big Broadway producer. Yeah, what a genius, what a genius. Cut the rip. Do you fellas know the Hathaways have sold the joint? Sure, it takes dough to move to the rich. And that ain't all. Most of those monkeys have given up their jobs. You mean they're depending on the show? Yeah, singers can't work. The public wouldn't understand. And have they got a public? We've rounded up every stooge in New York. What a mob! When the show opens at the end, it'll look like Madison Square Garden on fight night. Well, what about a little appreciation? Yeah, we're wearing ourselves out trying to help you pay a bet to us. Look at him. That's gratitude. Not even a thanks that we get. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, fellas. There's only one thing to do. What's that? Stop the show. It can't go on. Hey, you can't do that. What about our show? I don't care about that. He's out of his mind. And we're out of 500. It's mutiny, that's what it is, mutiny. Oh, Mrs. Hathaway, I've got something to tell you. Can't it wait until later? No, I want to talk to you now. But I haven't time, Jimmy. I must do my number. We are ready. All right, I'll be right with you. Oh, Mrs. Hathaway, why did you sell the restaurant? Why have these people given up their jobs? Well, we're back in show business again, aren't we? Yes, but I suppose it's a flop. Shame on you, Jimmy. We don't even let ourselves think of such things. Yes, but they do happen. And if it does, what then? Well, that's the gamble we're taking. Our years spent here are going to be forgotten. We're turning back to a life we love. We've known great happiness in the theater, and we belong to it, all of us. And when the curtain falls, if the show is a failure, well, I guess that's sort of the end of everything, isn't it, Jimmy? Come on, Beatrice. All right, I'm coming.
don't gang up and keep your mind on what you're here for. Hello, Joe. What's the idea of being late? Hurry up and don't forget. Plenty of applause. Put it over. Make them think you mean it. Hello, Molly. Say, listen, what kind of a shindig is this? If you'd have been here on time, you'd already know, but never mind. You like it. And don't forget, plenty of applause to the performers. Performers? No, performers, actors. And don't sit on your hands. Applaud everything. Hiya, Monk. And listen, no whistling, no stamping. This is high class. Applaud everything. Every time they finish a song, rock the house with applause. Well, you guys must be nuts to pull a thing like this. Why, if Weinstein ever hears of this, there's no telling what he's liable to do. He might throw us all in the can. Listen, Barnes, not so loud. Look, we could get plenty tough about them rubber checks you gave us, see? But we're gonna be nice and give them back to you after the show, see? Now, if that's the deal, and you're gonna live up to it, see? And if you call for a song of the sea, we'll hear the capstan round. With the yo heave ho for the wind is free. Fine, kiss the trip and the helm's a lee. Hurrah for the homeward bound. Yo ho heave ho. To so lay aloft in the howling breeze may tickle a landsman's taste. But the happiest hour a sailor sees is when he's down at an inland town with his Nancy on his knees. Yo ho! And he's on a wrong way. Of ballad songs and snatches and dreamy lullabies and dreamy Oh, it's glorious. I'm looking all over for you. Did you get the dope in the dame? No. Weinstein's lawyer found out about us. He had Barnes on the phone threatening all kinds of trouble. That's too bad. I'll go back and help Barnes stall the lawyer. Get hold of the dough and hurry. came to wish me good luck. Hello, kid. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so happy. I've never been so happy. Even the rehearsals, all the working and hoping and planning, all of it's been one grand thrill. And I owe every second of it to you. Jimmy, look at me. Can I come in? Don't mind me. Go right ahead. I only came back to help. Oh, hello. Say, you look like 20,000 years in Sing Sing. What's happened to you? You have to hurry, Miss Lee, to get ready. Please. Oh, all right. Poor kid. She'll be in the tough spot if she don't click in this show.
mister. So will I. Comfort me. I'll be a number. Please. Please. I expect I'm the emperor of Japan And I'm his daughter-in-law elect He'll marry his son He's only got one to his daughter-in-law elect My morals have been declared particularly correct And but nothing at all compared to those of his daughter-in-law elect Fatherly kind of way I govern each tribe and sect All cheerfully own my sway Except his daughter-in-law elect As tough as a bone With a will of her own Is his daughter-in-law elect My nature is love and light My freedom from all detect it Is insignificant quite Compared to his daughter-in-law elect Oh! Mikado never did in Japan exist To nobody second I'm certainly reckoned a true philanthropist It is my very humane endeavor to make to some extent Each evil ever a running river of harmless merry men My object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make each prince the paint unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. All prose 
the dull society. Jimmy, you gotta listen to reason. Barnes couldn't stall a lawyer any longer. The mouthpiece says that we have in 15 minutes, he's gonna call the cops. Did you get the dough? Well, good. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's scram. Did you come in? No. Are you nuts? We said the law will be here. You guys want to take a powder, go on, but I'm going to stay here and see this thing through. I told you he's going soft on us. Well, if you're crying about them hams, you're screwy. We got our dome, we're not going to give it any judge. Come on, Chuck. Sure. I got to have loyalty from a pal or I'm through. <laughs> I thought you'd gone. I couldn't leave you, you big chump. My object of the blind, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit the crime, the punishment fit the crime, and make it strip the pit, unwillingly represent the source of innocent merriment. Wait, oh, Jimmy, the cops are coming. I heard the sirens. They'll be here any second. Come on, Jimmy, let's go. I told you I'm staying. Okay, then we'll take your grand, Chuck. Let me alone. Make it Stop. Stop the show. What's the matter? What happened? What happened? Stop the show. Come out here, everybody. Listen, everybody. Yeah, you guys might as well be in on this, too. Listen, you think you're going over pig, don't you? That all this applause is on the level, well, it's not. It's a fake, all of it. They didn't pay for their seats. I asked them here for laughs. Yes, for laughs, at your expense. She's not backing the show. That's a lie, too. She's a dance hall hostess. And you think the Hathaways are big stars, well, they're not. They're just a couple of broken-hearted actors that the public didn't want. The theater, the show, everything about it is just a dirty, rotten, spiteful trick to get back at you. Jimmy, how could you? How could you? Because I'm small, mean, petty, just a cheap heel. Just the opposite from what you thought. And I know what I've done. I made you give up your jobs, torn your hearts out, ruined your lives. I'm a rat. Go on, say it. No one can say that, Jimmy. When a fellow has the courage to stand up in front of all these people, take his medicine like you have, well, he still tops with me. You can say that. After all I've done. Wait a minute, officer. Give us a break. Just a minute. He'll be right out. Hey, what's all the excitement? This cop's my escort. I'm in a hurry. I want to see Jimmy Allen. Where is he? What is this? Have you turned producer? Well, I... I guess so, but I'm afraid I made a mess of it. Well, that's too bad. Yes, I heard you were here, but I've more important business that can't wait. I'm shipping my stable to the Derby tomorrow, and Gretchen Holman and I want to buy that horse. For ten grand? Yes. Why, that gives me 2,500 commission. Hey, that's an idea. How much would it take to back this show? Oh, forget it. Don't waste your money. The public doesn't want it anymore. Just a minute, Mr. Dillon. May I have a word? Oh, hello, Lockwood. These gentlemen are of the press. They're the most important critics in town. Critics? Yes. Say, who let you in? Well, listen, fellows, don't write up this show. Oh, there must be some mistake. We've enjoyed the performance. My colleagues and myself feel that New York owes you a debt of gratitude for bringing back these fine artists. And I assure you that our columns will express those sentiments to the public. I think it'll be interesting to uh, hear from the people present. Right. Jimmy, I'm with you. Thanks. Don't thank me. Thank them. Dylan, this is Virginia Lee. 
How do you do? How do you do? Virginia Lee. Was she named after the horse you're going to sell me, or was it named after her? Oh, so that's it. What can I say? I'll say it on with the show. Your anger play berry, for all will be merry. I think you had better succumb and join our expressions of tea. On this subject, I pray you be dumb. Your notions, though many, are not worth a penny. The word for your guidance is mum. You got a good bargain in me. On this subject, we pray you be dumb. I think you had better succumb. The threatened cloud has passed away. But though the night may come too slow, Yes. 